HVAC heat load calculations, HET 191, week 6, calculating heating loads. The objective of this lesson is to help the HVC technician to develop an understanding of the importance of the manual J, understand the different types of issues that can affect heating loads, analyze the construction of a home, and determine the type of heating loss, and use charge tables and forms to calculate heat loss of a home. In this introduction, uh, heating equipment is needed to maintain the temperature in a home in the wintertime. However, the heating system must be sized correctly or uh, there can be major operational issues with the equipment. With this in mind, a technician should use industry standards procedures to match the equipment with the heating loss of a structure. Without knowing the precise heating losses, the equipment could be oversized or undersized, which not function correctly during the extreme outdoor conditions. So we find many of this in Manual J. A lot of times it's talked about this in Section 4. Some of the terms we want to discuss is Manual J, heat transfer multiplier, latent heat loads, design outdoor temperature, design indoor temperature, net wall area, opaque panels, and worst case procedures. So therefore, uh, the comfort in the house is really the business of our technicians and designers and business owners to be able to uh, build a system that is capable of matching uh, the customer's expectations. So therefore, contractors, installers, service personnel must first work with the customer to establish realistic expectations. Second, uh, install a system that performs to those expectations, which is critical because they have to be a balance that we, they pay us to do uh, something they don't understand, but at the same time, we have the responsibility to make sure we're doing the best job at all times. Benefits of detailed and accurate load calculations. One of the reasons why we need to determine the uh, heat load calculations and why it, looking at the, the building construction and to, to get the closest to and as most accurate uh, numbers as possible is because uh, sizing equipment these days because of the efficiencies uh, that equipment is undersized and oversized will cause many service issues. So, a use the smallest defensible load approach to equipment sizing, optimize system performance, and maximize customer satisfaction. So, accurate and aggressive load estimates, which is providing specific comfort and humidity control at design conditions, provide acceptable comfort and humidity controls at partial load conditions, provide reasonable comfort at outdoor design conditions, and reduce the possibility of indoor mold and mildew, uh, such as when the humidity is too high over longer cycles, and optimize uh, installation costs, basically to reduce the installation costs because we're putting the correct size equipment in, uh, reducing operating costs because it's not short cycling and running longer than it should and wasting energy. And lastly, to improve reliability, uh, which again, keep from having short cycling of equipment. So some of the other benefits we can run into by determining a very accurate type of uh, low estimates is to translate to smaller, less expensive equipment, of course, and to translate to smaller duct size and increase duct efficiency, especially with existing undersized ducts, and which is a, a big problem when you retrofit HVC systems to um, newer pieces of equipment with older duct systems. To minimize service demand loads imposed on utility grids, I translate to com competitively pricing the system proposals and quotes that minimize surprises after the system is put in and to service, which of course causing all the issues and complaints from the customers and can 
end up into uh, litigation with lawyers in the courts and to demonstrate uh, due diligence in the courts of laws if we did what we're supposed to do, which is uh, correct. And provide uh, design values for sensible and late uh, equipment capacity. So some of the things we deal with, and with the main thing is heat loss through walls, and it's based on the type of materials the house is constructed in, and the type of windows and doors that is used in the house also. So all these different things will uh, play effect to the heat loss through a structure. As we look at this picture here, and by using insulation and using uh, ventilation and the things that the house is constructed of, it will play a major part of heat loss. The construction of the house, if we go back to the slide before, we had a ceiling. This is more cathedral type ceiling. But if we look at this, it has to be insulation to keep from transferring heat through the walls to outdoors. Uh, the better the house is constructed, the better the insulation, uh, the least amount of energy lost through the structure. Even the floors, what we don't think about a lot of times, if the concrete floor is outdoors, part of it is, and it will transfer heat in, through the concrete into the floor, which is a very large heat mass. And it can cause other issues too, because we have cold floors that's not insulated, it can cause uh, the floors to condensate or even very low temperatures to even uh, freeze in certain locations. Other things we need to consider is infiltration and exfiltration. And as we look at uh, this diagram here, we see uh, on the left side of the structure, uh, if the wind is blowing, that side we call the windward side, uh, it will force the pressure to be higher and any cracks through windows or doors and any other type of openings will enter the house and of course cause air to enter. But on the opposite side of the structure, what you see on the right side is the uh, negative pressure side. And because of this negative pressure, air will leave the inside of the house. So if we bring air in, it will leave someplace. And that's the problem because we bring in cold air in in the winter time, we have to heat it. Then we take in warm air that is heated and taking it back outdoors, which makes the house uh, less efficient. Air can enter and escape the structure through many obvious places, and here's a list of different types. But anything that can open and close, any penetration, any penetration through the house can cause air to leak out or in. As we see here, even uh, penetrations, we see this through a crawl space, the plumbing going through, and if there's a pressure difference from inside to outside, which usually there will be, air can leak in. Even if you look at the uh, picture on the wall, you see uh, the electrical fixture, air do leak through those also, and those need to be sealed up. Most of the time it is not, but we, uh, as we, if you weatherize a house, this is one of the points that you will always consider. Having uh, a big temperature difference from indoors and outdoors can cause uh, the uh, air leakage, but anything that's electrical outlets, if it could be any type of penetration, can cause infiltration. Now if you look at this, and it's, this is basically some information we just wrote in, so you can take a look at it, and it's on worksheet A out of the uh, manual J. And in this worksheet, it looks at the basic information of the house. So the first time to do an inspection of the house, you will basically write the customer name down or the project name. And we're looking for the indoor and outdoor design conditions. And with this here, we are recording the information what we are looking for, and this is basically how we fill it out. This is the very beginning of it as you inspect the house, and of course, if it's a brand new construction where you're just going by blueprints, you will a lot of times just estimate it based on the location where the house could be uh, built. Fenestration heat loss uh, is the where it comes to our windows, glass doors, skylights, uh, the transfer through uh, a, a translucent type of uh, barrier, like windows, sunlight can come in, uh, another transfer of, of uh, movement of heat. So what we call the HTD, which is the heat transfer 
um, difference, the temperature difference. And we're looking at the temperature difference between indoors and outdoors. And there's a design uh, outdoor temperature, so we have to go to our chart and table from the menu J and look at that to determine uh, what the design outdoor temperature based on the season. The seasons, two seasons that would be recorded under would be either summer or winter. So as we look at that, go to the chart, go to the, the city as closest to the city that you, the house will be built. And there's multiple cities throughout the United States that you will be on the list. They are listed by states and by major cities. And they will have a design outdoor temperature for that and also humidity also for indoor and outdoor conditions. So there's an example of that where you look at the temperature 70 degrees minus zero outdoors which will give you a heat uh, temperature difference of 70 degrees. And each, each house has to be done that because you need to know how the heat load is based on the materials that the house is built off. And so this comes from, if you look at this, this is uh, the table 2A and looking at just windows and it listed uh, on the on these tables from the left to right you see the type of glass like I say clear glass and then it lists out the type of diff different clear glass you may find uh, such as 1AC is a single pane operable window or sliding glass door and let's say it's a double pane so you go down to 1DC which is a double pane operative window or sliding door and if you move over to the next column it does have a metal break, uh, or it doesn't have a metal break, and or is it wood? As we go through, or vinyl, as we go through, we can see the heat transfer factor per square foot. And as if we look at the calculation, we actually looking at this heat transfer factor, which is the conductivity of the uh, the door or window, and we are taking that multiply it by the square feet of that door or window. And when I say door, I'm mentioning sliding glass doors because sliding glass doors are considered windows. And then we multiply it times the temperature difference from indoor outdoors. And as you go through, you can see the different types of windows. So they have all the windows listed out that you may find. And if you look at this, this is heat load windows and glass doors got an example here I've got here the window is three feet by four feet double hung and it has wood framed double pane so basically it's 12 square feet and if we plug everything in the U is the U factor or the heat transfer factor times the TD so as we go through we can see 0.57 times 70 degrees equals 39.9 and basically we multiply that by the square feet and at 39.9 times 12, which is the square feet of the window, now gives the total heat loss of 470 BTUs per hour. So look at the chart. We see 1 DC followed over to the wood type window. We get the heat transfer factor, or the U factor, which is uh, 0.57. And then we look at uh, a bay window, just how to use this chart. And uh, just looking at Julio's type uh, windows where um, it's a projected window assembly and you see the two different types and you can see the heat transfer factor on those type of windows. And going through in table two is for skylights. And a couple of things you have to look at skylights is really uh, for heating. Um, it's the size of it, but what type of also curb does it have? It's a small curb. The curb is the extension above the roof deck itself. And all um, uh, skylights will have some type of curve. Sometimes it's a fix where window glass that, can, that, is, that doesn't open, then they do make some that the uh, windows do open. But that would be, of course, uh, the type of window. But we have to look at the curve because we do transfer heat through the curb also. And this page shows you the type of curb and how we look at the heat transfer per square foot of that. And we look at the, uh, as we go farther 
looking at the skylights and curves and we look at the efficiency of it based on these different uh, factors. And so for example, let's look at this 4x4 four four double pane skylight with the wood curve uh, with a 10 inch high, which gives us uh, 16 square feet of this curve altogether. And if you multiply everything out, we take the, uh, the U factor of that, which is 0.94 times the temperature difference. Then of course, we have to multiply that times the square feet, and that will give us a total amount of heat loss of 1,000. 53 BTUs per hour. Opaque panels, heat loss, opaque panels are walls. Opaque meaning that you cannot see through it. Opaque uh, would be the, uh, the exterior walls where you transfer heat through. And of course there's many different types of construction. It could be brick outside, it could be vinyl siding, wood siding. It could be um, some type of masonry type of uh, material. But so they make uh, tables for each one of these type of construction. So you have to go through based on the, the construction of the house and find one that matches it uh, as close as possible. Then you would go through and then go through the process of the same thing like we did the windows and, and doors. So opaque panels are an impervious type to light uh, air. Basically, hopefully air, air doesn't go through it, but it's a possibility it can if there's penetrations. They include walls, doors, floors, and ceilings. And the process again, we go to the the heating uh, temperature difference. Um, we look at the U value of that by looking at the table. And then, of course, we multiply times the, what you call the net area. The net area. The load area is the net area. The net area is the walls minus any doors or windows. Minus any doors or windows. So, as we do that, because, you know, the doors and windows have its own different type of heat transfer, it usually doors and windows will have a higher uh, heat loss than the walls do. So, we have to look at that because if we figure the walls the same as the doors, we will lose, uh, or basically undersize, the, uh, uh, the heat loss through the house because, again, the doors and windows has a greater amount of heat loss. So we look at this, exposed floors, uh, heating, we look at the tables and look at the different types of uh, basement floors, even slab floors will have basically the uh, very similar type of um, uh, heat loss and, and charts for these uh, conditions. So let's look at this and we look at the uh, table 4A which lists out uh, the start of these type of opaque surfaces. And for example, um, if you look on this, we had a, a solid door. If a door has a window in it, we have to consider the window also separately and look at the type of glass the window in a door is. That's why we consider sliding glass doors as windows. So if you have a, a door that has a we have to separate out the window and figure out the heat loss through that. So we, let's say we had a solid door, no window, and it had a metal storm door. We uh, try to find as close as possible to that, uh, that type of door. If you look at F, F is a solid core with metal storm, and its U value is 0.28. And then we look at the closest temperature difference from that. Uh, we look at the design cooling temperature difference, then, but the, again, that's cooling is a little bit different, but we look at heating, it will go by the, uh, the square feet, by the U-factor, and the temperature difference from indoors and outdoors. So in this example, it's a solid door, and we look at it and found out that its heat transfer factor is 0.28 uh, times the 70 degree temperature difference which give us 19.6, then we multiply it by a square feet, and that will give us a heat loss of 412 BTUs per hour. And so we look at walls and partitions, and this is one of the pages from uh, Manual D, and you see that it's listed out, and it gives us the, uh, the different types of windows. In other words, like a wall, like 12A, listing out no insulation, in a stud cavity. 
12B is using our 11 insulation with a 2x4 stud cavity, and 12C is listing out uh, our 13 insulation and a 2x4. They have it for many different types of wall construction, so you just have to go through and look at the type that uh, we have. And you look at the chart, it lists out, uh, of course, the, the construction number, which you will write on the forms. You will write out the uh, of course, the R value, and it's based on the, the finish, exterior finish. And but it gives a group number too. It's very important to write down that group number because as you go through your paperwork, that you will be using this later on because that will apply to a certain step in the process of determining heat load. So going through this example, and we're looking at uh, a two by four wood frame wall with siding. We're using R11 in the cavity between the, the two by fours, and they say it has no uh, board insulation on outside of the wall, and they say the wall is 10 feet long, 8 feet tall, with no windows, which is 80 square feet, and if we use the heat, trans heat transfer factor uh, and look at the uh, U value and the temperature difference, that would give us that number of 6.8. Uh, 7, 9 multiplied times the square feet of the wall. If you look at the, this wall, even though it's large, it's 80 square feet, it's only transferring 543 BTUs per hour. But if you look at the door, a solid door, which is very low square feet, and it's almost the same amount of BTUs per uh, that full structure. So you can see that the door do lose a great deal of heat energy. Great deal. So, looking at uh, block walls or partition walls, we only consider this only when there's a temperature difference on both sides of the wall. If this partition wall inside of the house on the interior, we do not use this. But if it's separating, uh, like the garage, or let's say a sunroom that may not be heated, or may be running at a different temperature, we will consider this heat loss and use this this chart uh, for those type of conditions. Basement walls are a little bit different because uh, part of the basement is below grade. Uh, of course, the basement is constructed out of different types of material. And so we need to be able to consider that when we, uh, uh, if a house have a basement. And so another thing too, part of the basement is above grade. And because it's above grade, it will transfer heat differently than the heat below the grade because anything below grade below the frost line, it pretty much maintained the same temperature year-round. Um, even in the summer or winter, it will uh, be a very consistent temperature. And at below grade, the temperature will be less than above grade. So we look at these factors and look at the basement window and the, it's, it's subtracted. If, if you have a door in the basement for some house, some basements do have walk-up basements, we have to consider the doors too. But the walls itself, we have to consider anything above and below. We look at the square feet, we look at the net wall area, multiply time is heat transfer factor to get the total amount of BTUs for that load itself. Now, look at uh, ceilings under attics lost. So there's a chart for that. We need to look at a couple different things because we know the attic can be very hot in the summertime. But in the wintertime, we don't really consider that. So when we get into the cooling loads, you would notice that we'll be discussing some of the issues that we'll run into for uh, summer operation. But we look at the heat load, we look at the square feet of the of the ceiling. Of course, there will be no, unless it's a skylight, uh, but usually there's no doors or windows up in the ceiling, so usually it's just open space unless there is a skylight installed. But we already figured the skylights from the, um, uh, the window chart, but uh, we will subtract out that square feet um, for, to get the net wall area or ceiling area. So we look at it, uh, heat loads and going through floors and unconditioned space or crawl spaces. Now, because the temperature of the crawl space is not going to be the same temperature as the house, in which we consider unconditioned, we have to look at the, the environment and look at the heat transfer through those factors. So these factors need to be uh, developed and look at the same thing. But so we basically we go to the chart and we find a chart for uh, floors that is above crawl spaces or non-conditioned space. And how we would do this is look at the floor space 
and we find the closest one to it, if it's insulated or not insulated, we will determine if uh, that uh, the amount of insulation, so we could figure out the heat transfer through that and find its U value. Then we will go to uh, temperature difference to go to the nearest one to it while going under. So if here you see that 70 degrees is perfect fit right there. If it was 73, we just round it off to 75. If that was your uh, uh, design indoor, uh, difference between indoor and outdoors. So the basements, we look at charts and, and we look at the uh, the basement floors because the basement floor is sitting on top of grade and it's below grade and it's going to be a pretty consistent temperature. It will have a different heat loss uh, temperature of it. We, one of the things we do, we look at the the width and the size of the, of the floor and we'll go by these charts. So we look at this and uh, go by the temperature difference, look at the, the area of the floor and see how it transferred this way. But you can see because it's below grade, it's over 200 square feet. We're only losing uh, 378 BTUs in this example of a basement that have 200 square feet of floor space, 20 by 10. Of course, most basements are larger than this, but uh, unless it had a crawl space. But at the same time, we do consider the heat loss through that. One thing we have to know, and a lot of times if there's not blueprints, we don't know, uh, Newer houses, if it's, a, uh, it's well constructed and it was insulated, a lot of times they would put insulation underneath the concrete to give it better insulation value. And But consider that if you don't know, just consider no insulation. So other things we look at is uh, the slab you go through on uh, on a grade and, and of course higher up and the floors will be a little bit cooler. And so we have to look at the running edge of the floor because that's going to lose a great deal of heat energy at the edge because it's exposed to outdoors. And so we look at this and, and we'll go through and use this chart accordingly to determine uh, even the type of soil that uh, the house is sitting on top of if it's a slab floor. In the Midwest, they don't build too many slabs because of the issues with heat uh, loss. But in certain parts of the country, it's very popular. Go down to Florida, go to Arizona, and uh, maybe even California. You find uh, very many homes that have uh, that have slab floors. Do uh, the information. Block loads are really just to determining the total loads uh, through infiltration and other things. Infiltration is basically looking at the CFMs, how much leakage the house have, and and the leakage is looking at the air changes and air changes per hour. And air changes is that the volume of air of the house, well, the volume of the house based on the volume of the air leaking into it. And how often do we change the air in the house? We don't want a house too tight because a house very tight, uh, of course, can be very stuffy. Any uh, bacteria or viruses can just uh, uh, recirculate throughout the house. So we do want to change. Uh, the volume in the house a certain amount without having too much. So we need to look at this and, and look at certain things in the house where we can actually cause infiltration like fireplaces or uh, ventilation fans uh, such as kitchen fans, bathroom fans, and things like that. But we want to consider that but also knowing that we want to have a certain amount of uh, air changes in the house. So we look at this block load infiltration as the process to do that. So the block load infiltration for heating, from this example, we look at a, a dwelling at 4,000 square feet elevations, which is very high. And at 70 degrees temperature difference, a house has a 10-foot ceiling and has 1,600 square feet of heating floor area and an average construction tightness. There are three fireplaces and of average uh, tightness, uh, if engineered, ventilation is required, less than 51 uh, CFMs of outdoor air will be introduced into the return site of the duct system. So here's a solution we look at. The, if you look at table A or 5A under uh, air changes per hour value uh, for an envelope of uh, 0.38 and the uh, fireplace adjustment is 20 CFMs 
uh, for the uh, first fireplace plus tensity envelopes for other two fireplaces, the following calculation shows that the envelope infiltration rate is 101 uh, CFMs, 101 CFMs, and that the infiltration CFMs for the dwelling is 131 uh, with the fireplace adjustment. The corresponding heating load at 4,000 uh, feet amplitude is 8,796 BTUs per hour. So let's look at the calculations. We look at, as you go through, and the numbers and how we multiply them out and put everything in. So this is basically the steps to go through. So we're looking at the above grade volume of heating. Uh, then we're looking at the envelope infiltration. Then we're looking at the fireplace adjustment. Then we went through the infiltration CFMs. Um, then we looked at the, uh, the amplitude uh, correction factor. Actually, the higher up you are, the faster air moves and the windier it would be, which can cause more infiltration and exfiltration through a structure. And as we uh, look at this, uh, this chart, worksheet B, and <coughs> it's for determining uh, heat loads information to uh, determine the um, how air and heat is transferred from the structure. And we just fill in the, uh, and look at these tables and to get the um, the quality of the information that we need. So this worksheet, we actually fill this in uh, from the information that we required. And this is only a partial of the, the sheet, but if you look at it, we've got the, the, the orientation of the glass, such as the north side, uh, the east side, the west side, and the south side. And because of the direction where the wind be coming from in the winter time, you can add more or less wind or infiltration uh, to the house. So we need to consider this because if we are leaking air into the house, of course, we have to heat it. And the heat load of the heat equipment has to be sized correctly to compensate for that amount. And windows, we have to look at that too, is filling out the information for the windows uh, on the, the table, in table uh, or worksheet C, uh, to fill in. It, it, it depends on orientation again. Is it uh, north, south, east, or west uh, orientation, the number of panes it have? to determine uh, the information. Of course, we get this information from uh, Manual J uh, for our, uh, to get the, to fill in these uh, these spots. Okay, this is the next worksheet D, opaque panels. And like we fill in these, this worksheet out, and this is actually filling in the information based on the information that we collected from the house. Remember, opaque windows, dealing with uh, solid doors, walls, partitions, below grade, ceilings, and so forth. This is worksheet E, dealing with infiltration. And this is filling out the sheets and what it would look like if you um, wrote it in or typed it in or had a software to load this in. In this course, we will be using a spreadsheet to, um, spreadsheet to be able to populate these, these tables. Worksheet G works in duct runs in unconditioned space. And basically, this is designed to, um, when you have duct work that is located in um, crawl spaces or in attics, that we need to consider the heat loss or heat gain uh, through the duct work because it's uh, either been taken away in the wintertime or gaining heat, which the uh, for the summertime for the air conditioning which will put a uh, big stress on the equipment so because of that we have to size the equipment accordingly by sizing it larger for both cases. Worksheet H is the engineered ventilation. This one we're putting mechanical ventilation into the structure to know exactly how much uh, air that we are transferring through the house or air changes and and knowing how we can control that by looking at these factors. Looking at table one, this is what we talked about earlier, the outdoor design conditions for the United States. And you see this uh, very quickly, we see Illinois, and you can see the different cities listed out, but they got every major city throughout the United States listed in this table. Table 2A goes into uh, glass windows and sliding glass doors. Uh, here's another 
uh, chart you see for uh, other types of uh, windows. Closer look at it. Again, same. So this for skylights. Another sheet for the skylight and curbs. And this is information that we will uh, be using to determine these uh, heat losses. And here's some of the uh, definitions and uh, how to work out these problems from the notes for table 2A. Again. And now we're looking at the curbs, looking at the, uh, the the square feet of the curbs based on the size and determining if it's a large curb or a small curb and then uh, basically uh, filling that information into the, one of the charts we are using to determine heat loss for the uh, skylights. And again, this is another table, but we only use this for uh, heat gain. So for heat loss, we don't use uh, table 3A1 because you look at this, this is based on um, heat transfer based on the orientation of the of the window. And there we go. It's explained the cooling loads and so forth. We'll talk about this uh, next weekend, the next PowerPoint presentation. And this is a closer look at it. One thing we do need to consider in the summertime, and we'll discuss this more in detail next week, because uh, the sun can come through a window and what we call solar gain. It can add heat to uh, the house just by the sun uh, shining through the window, transfer it through the window through radiation. And we have to, if the house have eaves on it, of course, it can help uh, keep that from happening. But we need to know exactly at the peak of the summer that angle determine uh, basically how much of the window will be shaded and we fill out this chart to determine that but we do that in heat gain calculations. There's a little more information about that. Just read through it. Table 4A is looking at heat loss and gain through opaque uh, structures. And again, for um, this information that we'll look at to help determine that. Part of this is for our cooling loads, so we don't consider that during the winter time. There's additional information as we look at some of the default uh, indoor design temperatures and so forth, and looking at uh, the steps, how to work through this, and some of the exceptions that we will look at. Let's close a look at Table 4A. Again, table 4A, and giving you some of the uh, notes for that. Additional information, a closer look at it. Four A. Now, this is for cooling notes again, and we're looking at exposed walls. Even we have to consider the color of the wall and how it will affect um, heat transfer through it. And it's going by actually the color of the, the, uh, the design for cooling loads. But again, in summertime, if it's bright light color, it can, or if it's shaded, it can help uh, keep some of the radiant heat from transferring into the structure. But this is for cooling loads. Again, it's a closer look at it. closer look at it. And for ventilation, it's a big thing because we know in the summertime the attic gets extremely hot, We've been absorbing heat all day long from the sun and it could be well over 130 degrees in the attic and because of that heat transfer, uh, the attic or the ceiling temperature, the, t the temperature difference from the uh, outside to inside would be greater from the attic to into the house because of uh, that very high temperature that we find in the attic. So ventilation does help to lower the temperature and so we do consider that so this is some of the things we find in 
table 4b and some of the notes dealing with uh, heat transfer and usually this is a bigger factor in the summertime again let's a closer look at that again a closer look and some of the notes and how to determine how to work out that based on the type of doors through opaque load more information